Well, joining me now is retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell. And, Sean, why do the Ukrainians think that the Russian offensive to come will be more intense? Well, it's a great question because the challenge is, has the Russian military actually been spent, and this is more a request for Ukraine for more weapons, uh, or, or are they genuinely a really um, credible threat for this forthcoming spring offensive? Part of the answer to that lies, I think, if we look back in history, Russia, when it initially launched the invasion on the 24th of February, it uh, expected just to walk into the country. That didn't work. It expected then to go and attack Kyiv and, and try and take that. That didn't work. And Russia's found itself locked now, its third attack, into the Donbass in a grinding war of attrition, which is a war that it actually was not prepared for, and it stalled. At that point, then, uh, the Wagner Group was brought in to try to make some progress around Bakhmut and around the southern area here. Despite massive casualties, they didn't make much progress, but what it did do was bought time for the Russians. They've mobilised 320,000 of their um, new um, recruits. Uh, half of them have been deployed, half of them are just finishing their training at the moment. And it's worth remembering that Russian domestic frustration, they've seen rising casualties, a lack of progress. So President Putin is very well motivated to uh, get a claim a decisive victory and soon. And in terms of what we might expect from the Russian military, what do you think? The Russians have taken a beating uh, over the last year, but actually they are a major power and we fully expect them to, to learn from their mistakes. They now know what the threat that the Ukraine poses. They know what uh, capabilities work and they also, most importantly, know what doesn't work, which means that for the spring, Russia will be better prepared and therefore will be more dangerous. Uh, the challenge is they've still got the same weapons to use and although they've created quantity with their soldiers, they're not quality and they're not experienced. So part of the challenge is if they were able to mount an all-arms approach, by that I mean if the uh, soldiers can operate effectively with the tanks and the artillery and the Russian Air Force, then they would pose a really major threat on the battlefield. The challenge is, though, Western analysts believe that they will just continue doing the same thing they've been doing, throwing mass at the Ukrainians, and, of course, that makes them vulnerable to Western weapons. Um, it'll be... But regardless, we expect the Russian uh, offensive to be absolutely big, focused, dangerous, but also with a clear set of objectives. Where, almost certainly, the north of the Donbass, up the top there, but the main focus will almost certainly be about, uh, uh, around Bakhmut. The real question, though, is what they do about Zaporizhia and to the east. They'll want to respond to the potential Ukraine threat down there. The danger is if they split, Russia splits their resources too far, the danger is neither work, and that could end up with a bit of a rout. You talk about Russia being better prepared, but, of course, so will the Ukrainians. They certainly will have more tanks, won't they? They will, and I think that's part of what we expect to see from the Ukrainians, is that these tanks are going to take time to arrive, and therefore, almost certainly, because these tanks will be decisive, they'll not want to get locked into an attritional battle before they arrive. As a result, we fully expect that sort of phase one of their spring campaign for the Ukrainians will almost certainly be a defensive play, um, rely on Western support for weapons, and make the Russian offensive... Uh, be huge casualty rates, inflict huge casualties on the Russians, and when the Russian military culminate, that will be the time when they will be able to push them back. Where we expect that to happen? It could happen in the Donbass area for the Ukrainian push, but to be honest, it would be really difficult to make significant ground there. What's most likely is that they need to sever this land bridge down here to the east of Zaporizhia, using their tanks, major punch, down to the coast here, because what that would do, there's a lot of Russian positions all the way along this Dnipro River here that are pounding away at Helsinki. As soon as they've cut the land bridge here, that would mean that most of the Russians would have to flee and almost certainly rush to Crimea. Um, the reality is this, though, is we genuinely don't know. Clearly, that's in the minds of the military. There'll be deception plans, information operations, but it's pretty clear we're set for some decisive months of battle ahead.